All right, so this is the first of several videos I'm going to post kind of chronicling the uh, move of this vertical mill uh, into the basement of my, my house. I have a basement shop. Um, for a number of reasons, I've decided that that's the best place to put this piece of equipment. Um, I have an insulated garage, but it is not heated. I live up in the north. Um, it, it gets really cold in the winter. Um, and my wife comes and goes. It's kind of, you know, maybe not the best to use a heated garage uh, for tooling like this. And I'm pretty confident I can get it in my basement. And I already have a lathe down there. And easier to run power and, and all of that. So I've kind of made the decision. Yeah, I think this is going to go downstairs. Um, so I'm going to have to disassemble this uh, machine um, into its, you know, kind of base components. And... Um, skid it to slide it down my stairs. I have a wooden staircase. I'm going to do some reinforcement there, all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm, I'm going to cover that um, as best I can. I'm not a YouTuber. I don't have a lot of good video equipment. I don't have you know good cameras or microphones or anything like that. But I'll do my best because there's not a lot of real detailed information um, out there. there. There's some good threads on on forums out there there's some good discussion i thought maybe posting some video series of me moving this thing might might help some people who are debating uh this type of of activity and and kind of gauging how big of a piece of equipment uh, can be moved um, so what is this well this is a uh a gorton 016 vertical mill um, this was made around 1950 uh, this particular machine's in very, very nice shape. Um, it's going to be very similar to moving any kind of vertical mill uh, as far as taking it apart. Uh, this one has a fixed head. Uh, you can't tilt or nod the head, but the ram will come off the top uh, of the base casting. The table will come off. The saddle will come off. The knee will come off, uh, and I'll be left with a base casting. Um, while this machine is fairly small uh, in terms of milling machines, it only has a 24-inch table, uh, it is not light. Gorton was not shy about their use of cast iron. This machine weighs uh, just shy of 2,000 pounds, so it's not much difference in weight to a full-size bridge port, to, you know, a, a machine with a 40-inch table, for example. So um, a lot of what I'm doing here would be analogous to moving a bridge port. Um, it's it's maybe small, but it, it's it's not light. Uh, the advantage is that this is an extraordinarily rigid machine for its size, uh, and should be a pleasure to work with. Um, I've already taken it off the pallet, and I've got it on some pipes. You can see uh, I got it on some one-inch iron pipe. Um, this doesn't have to be anything special. You can go get a gas pipe from a hardware store; uh, works just fine. Um, but you need to know the surface that you're moving the machine across. Um, you know, I have, you can see there's kind of one big crack in my garage floor. But other than that, my garage floor is quite nice. And it's really easy to move. I can I can walk up and push this machine by hand. Uh, it rolls really uh, almost a little too easy uh, on these pipes. Um, and, you know, the base of your machine is going to be pretty similar to this, kind of a large cast iron foot. Uh, and it's important just to have enough pipes that you can keep up as you move it um, around so that, you know, it, it doesn't fall off them. Um, this was delivered on a pallet, and a lot of people who maybe are having machines delivered in or, or have ordered something from an online vendor, and, and this one was. This came from Global Machine Surplus. Uh, you're going to have it show up on a pallet. Uh, this showed up on a, on a very stout uh, pallet made out of uh, uh, pressure-treated 4 by and and two by four lumber it was about six inches off the ground and I had to get it off that pallet and I used a pair of automotive jacks um, and and slid it off the pallet and worked it down really slowly and I'll kind of talk about how you move these things um, it's very basic uh, so far I, I got this off the pallet was over by the garage door there I lowered it off a pallet um, and rolled it over here where I'm gonna disassemble it on my own well not entirely on my own it was myself and my good friend Johnson here. Now this is a Johnson bar. It's just a great big piece of steel. Uh, it's got kind of a, uh, a chisel point on the end. Um, 
and uh, and this is really kind of what you need to to move in a, a piece of equipment like this. Um, a couple of these, and you can pretty much do anything. A lot of these old machine tools will have some notches in the base, and that's specifically so when they're sitting flush to the floor, you can get a you can get a bar under there and and walk them around. And when they're up on rollers like this, it makes life really easy. And I've got this machine sitting on four pipes in one direction and you can actually put them on rollers in two directions. So I could have this also sitting on pipes running this way across the across the, the top of this 90 degrees to these pipes and then I can roll it back and forth on those pipes and side to side. So it kind of gives you two directions you can roll. It's really a pain in the butt to slide this. Uh, you can do it but it's just a pain in the butt to slide it around. And these do stick out a little farther on the other side here. Um, and you can stagger them, so if you have to slide it, you just keep sliding it on pairs of, of pipes. But basically that's it. You just need a lever and something to help you move the machine. And in this case, I'm using pipes. If your floor is uneven, you may want some of those machine skates. They even make some really fancy ones that they, they almost look like they got uh, treads on them. They're just a series of, of rollers. Uh, that actually are, are linked together um, and, uh, and, and are kind of, you know, you put one under each corner and they sometimes have a pivot bearing on the top. They're used for, for moving machinery. You can buy special purpose uh, tooling like that. I'm going to do this without trying to do that. Uh, I'm going to take this thing apart without using a cherry picker. I'm going to be very, very basic in this because I think a lot of people trying to get into the hobby don't have a lot of stuff you know you've already put out some money for a machine tooling's really expensive you're gonna spend way more money on tooling than you will on the mill so you know I I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to do this the simple way and I'm, I'm not gonna get real fancy with you know uh, toe jacks and a cherry picker or an overhead gantry or anything like that all I'm gonna use are some rollers so basic lumber um, and some hardware to disassemble this thing and lower it into my basement down a stairwell. So um, my my uh, stairwell is, is pretty straightforward. I've got a garage, uh, an entry for my garage, kind of an entryway and a kitchen and then straight down the stairs. So um, that's going to be the challenging part. Once I'm on the stairs and I'm actually sliding it down, I'm not going to be so worried about it. I'm a little more concerned about actually getting it in the, you know, up onto the threshold and into the house and that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll be posting a few of these. Um, uh, that is not what I'm going to use to <laughs> dismantle that. That was a, a hook the previous owner left in this garage. Uh, but I'm going to put some structure above it up uh, in the attic of this garage, uh, and I'm going to use that to uh, as a as a connection point to to hoist the motor and you know the ram, the table, the knee and stuff off of this machine. Uh, this m ridiculously oversized motor from 1950 is only a horse and a half. Um, it's a double wound two speed motor, and it's obnoxiously heavy for what it is. Um, and you can see the the uh, adjustment uh, on this motor. The, the whole thing is kind of a little cast iron base and some dovetails and this hand wheel and this is this is how the belt tension is set. So all of this has to come apart. The ram has to come off the base casting. That might get a little interesting. This is probably the single heaviest piece on this mill. Like I said, this is just shy of 2,000 pounds as it sits here. This guy here is probably 500 pounds, maybe six, uh, probably closer to five. Um, the base casting, I'm assuming, is somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 900 pounds uh, once I get everything off it. So still not trivial. And you know, the first point I would make is, is being able to understand the weights that you're dealing with and understanding what you're lifting before you do it. Um, and you might want to do a little research there and talk to some people that, that are used to this sort of thing. Um, again, this is just a, a baby machine in the machine tool world. 2,000 pounds is, is nothing. 
Um, and, you know, I've been around 20,000, 40,000 pound equipment that's been, that's been moved through similar means. Um, you know, I've, I've seen one guy in a pry bar adjust a two story, 40,000 pound welded structure, um, you know, by himself. So, uh, it's, it's kind of surprising what you can move, uh, with some basic tools and, and this shouldn't be too difficult. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how I'm going to set up uh, some supports above this machine and, uh, and how I'm going to take it apart in, in the next video.